Today on The Garden Fix, I'm going to show you how I prune this ornamental plum tree in our front yard. And Chris is going to show you what's going on with our hellebores. Also, stick around and watch how we eliminated one of our raised bed gardens and made it into an entirely new planting area. And I'll show you how I split and relocated a Shasta daisy. Welcome to The Garden Fix. I'm Rob, and we're in Zone 6, Western Pennsylvania. Today I'm going to show you how I pruned our ornamental plum tree in our front yard. As you can see, this plum tree was pretty thick in the middle, in the center area. So I did want to air out the middle, and so there wouldn't be any kind of branches crossing and rubbing against each other as much as I could. So when I did prune this tree, I did most of it with a good pair of loppers and a handsaw. And, uh, but when you are using a handsaw or loppers, you want to make sure you get the cleanest cut as possible. So as you can see by the, this is one of the branches I cut, you can see that I tried to get a very clean cut when I did that. On top of that, you want to get your cut to be about an inch or less from the main branch that you are cutting it from. Now, there's a lot of people who do not prune now uh, their trees and they wait till after flowering before they prune. So, and as you can see, this branch, this one branch has got hundreds of buds on it. And I am sacrificing a lot of flowers on this tree right now. Um, however, why do I do that? So the reason I do that now is because, uh, you know, there's a small window after flowering before the, the tree entirely leaves out. And so I really uh, think it's difficult <laughs> to prune trees when uh, you have a lot of a lot of foliage on it, and um, so I like to get it done now, and I do sacrifice some of the flower blooms, but um, I do know that this particular tree uh, will have a lot of blooms still on it, and also when it does leaf out, it'll look right, and that's more important to me. So here's the finished product of cleaning up the hellebores. Ideally, you want to clean up last year's growth as soon as this year's growth starts to appear. You want to make sure that you clear out all of the tattered leaves because you don't want any damaged or diseased leaves being around the new growth that could potentially cause them to have uh, diseases like leaf spot. And then also just to clean up the appearance of the plant. These guys, after they bloom, they're going to flush new leaves and replace all the ones from last year. And you have to make sure that when you're cleaning up, you make sure that if you had mulch, you get the ones that are hiding under the mulch too. So you can see that these guys have put on a lot of new growth. They're full of buds and they're going to be very nice this spring. The two in the front are the oldest ones that we have and they're a little darker in color. The two in the back are a lighter pink, and this little one in the middle, that's going to be the one I'm most excited about. Now, I don't know if it's gonna bloom this year or not, but that is an orange hellebore. So I bought it last year. It was just in its very infant stage, so it might take on a couple growing seasons before it actually blooms, but that one's gonna be really exciting. So one of the other things we're going to do today is we are going to take, uh, we have a, a Shasta daisy that's growing right back here. And it's been here for a number of years now, and it's getting too big. Um, if you take a look inside the center here, you can see um, what happens as it ages. Uh, the center part starts to die out, and it's starting to spread in a little bit too, too big of a place for this right now. So I'm going to dig the whole thing up, and I'm going to split it. And I'm going to replant part of it in another section. And then I'm going to take uh, the part that's left and put it back in. And uh, should be a pretty simple process as long as I can get it out of the ground. So here we go.
So I have the plant lifted now, and uh, there's not really any need to move it anywhere. I can cut it right here. So I'm going to do that right now and then uh, put it back in. So I'm driving right through the center of it with a nice sharp cut. And there we go. So I could actually break this into four pieces if I wanted. Um, but I think I'm going to leave that piece right there. And I'm going to take the other piece and use it. Well, this is one of our raised beds. We call this our triangle garden. And Kristen and I decided that we were going to take this guy out. And we thought that the shape of it um, just didn't work well with our, with our garden anymore in the back. So all we did was take a shovel, get underneath it, lift it straight up, and we were able to carry it right out, right out of the garden and down to our front yard where we may be using it uh, there instead. Because this was home to many plants, you had to be careful and go through everything, try to find all the plants that we had in there. And then we had to place them around the yard where we wanted to put them. So after that, we planted everything, watered it in, and uh, then we actually planted our mugo pine, and we also planted our hellebores that we had downstairs in the basement because the weather's been so nice lately, and I think those guys are going to be just fine, um, even if it does get cold again, which it probably will. The top of this new berm is going to be home to a ground rose that we have coming. I uh, can't wait to get that and I'll show you that when it comes in. All right, so that wraps up another video here at the Garden Fix. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Stay tuned for the next video. I'll take you through my process of pre-sprouting and potting up ranunculus. And if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe and like. And uh, until next time, we'll see you in the garden. So that wraps up another one of our videos. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us here at the Garden Fix. You said fix. Huh? You said fix. I didn't. You did say I'll, I'll play it again when we do it. You were listening funny. <laughs> I forgot what I said. No, that was so perfect, too. <laughs>